Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me for another episode today. This is going to be a Com C mini rummage. Grabbed a dozen cards here, uh, if I can pick these up, out of my uh, Com C order that came in uh, recently. And they're going to be all over the map as usual. And let's just dive right into it. So I got a early 70s Topps Luther Rackley here. Um, no real rationale behind this one, except that I thought it might be fun to try to collect the 71-72 Topps basketball set. Um, I like the bubble letter team names, which are kind of reminiscent of the hockey release that year. And also the NBA in general, and certainly back then, is just somewhat foreign to me. And so I enjoy just uh, a look at something that's a little bit unfamiliar. So just kind of slowly picking away at that set, grabbing cheap commons when I see them, you know, for 50 cents, 60 cents here or there. Over time, uh, here's a cool one. Nolan Ryan and Sylvester the Cat hologram. Um, this is out of the uh, Comic Ball, the Looney Tunes uh, release from Upper Deck. Um, but yeah, as a, as a kid of the 90s, the hologram is pretty awesome. And man, the light is cooperating quite nicely today with this one. That is a absolutely unique and a little bit quirky, but very, very cool addition to my Nolan Ryan collection there. Wish uh, I'd like to see holograms get brought back in, in some modern releases here. Ooh. Um, they're just really, really neat. Um, here's one for my 59 top set. Bobby Tiefenauer, probably mispronounced that, but um, just like the basketball card that I started off with here from 7172 Tops, this is towards uh, just a long term slow burn set pursuit. I'm working on 59 Tops in a binder, and I think I'm about approaching the two thirds complete mark or getting close to 70% now, so plugging along with that. You knew there was going to be some shine um, outside of the hologram and here we have a Sapphire Justin Verlander out of 2020 Topps Chrome Sapphire Edition. Um, I'm not going to go into it right now. I've talked about these cards so many times, but uh, I am one who counts, you know, Atomic and or Sapphire or Cracked Ice, you know, this this type technology, whatever you want to call it, um, is, is definitely responsible for some of my favorite uh, parallels of the 21st century in collecting. And I'm a big Verlander guy. I know pitchers don't get a lot of respect. Uh, in the hobby compared to power hitters, but um, I think he's one of the best and was happy to scoop that one up cheap. Uh, here's one that was probably cooler a few years back maybe than it is now. Uh, select Fire on Ice Vlad Tarasenko rookie card. Um, this guy was an absolute sniper when he came into the league, uh, you know, maybe six, seven years ago now. Um, but he's had some injury issues over time and that have definitely affected his ability to stay in the game uh, and some of his counting stats, but um, I love Select. This is not like a Prism version or a Shiny version, although those do exist. Uh, but even still, when you get the light right, you can just see the etching uh, here on these Select cards. It's just unmatched. Uh, Panini at its best. And of course, this came from the very limited period in time when uh, Panini had an NHL license to produce trading cards. And I'm just a big fan of their uh, hockey cards from that era. So happy to have this. And this is, of course, the blue uh, parallel, which matches nicely with the St. Louis Blues sweater. So a uh, pretty cool rookie card there, even if Tarasenko, you know, maybe isn't destined for the Hall of Fame, like it looked like he might be in his first couple of years. Uh, he's still a very good player, and I'm happy to have that one. Here's some more shine. This is out of the Stadium Club Chrome release. Love these X-Fractors, and I uh, wanted to pick up this Masahiro Tanaka. Just uh, always enjoyed his time with the Yankees, even though I'm a Red Sox fan. Um, and I, I guess I sort of have like a soft spot as well for Japanese pitchers, just having grown up in the whole uh, Hideo Nomo craze of the, the mid-90s. So uh, scoop that one up. That was like 90 cents, and I uh, thought that was just a cool single to have in my shiny card collection. Um, here's one that's uh, towards the set pursuit. So um, I had an episode a ways back where I showed off a lot that I got of 2012 Topps Chrome Purple Refractors, and I think I got something like maybe a third of the set, including some stars, like a second year Freddie Freeman, um, other cards like that. And so decided I'm gonna foolishly probably try to complete the 220 card set in purple refractor format. Uh, what's transpired in the time since is that uh, Bryce Harper had an amazing season and all his stuff's up like, you know, 300% or something crazy from what it was 
uh, earlier this year, and I am missing his rookie card in uh, Chrome Purple, so that's going to be a major roadblock to that set. But um, in the meantime, picking up some cheap ones here on Com C, and got a nice Cameron Mabin, uh, Mabin here uh, with a pretty interesting photo. There's a football card, which is going to be the only one of this video, I'm pretty confident. But again, I just love Select across all sports, love, love the Wave Refractor technology here. Um, and so this is a guy who, you know, ended up, as a lot of running backs do, having injury, you know, cut into his career and, and sort of left, left people asking, you know, what might have been. Uh, but at the same time, had some really good seasons. And there, there was a while there where this guy was just the darling of uh, the NFL as far as running backs go. And again, amazing etching. And, and this card was available, this parallel for, I think, like, it was definitely under a buck. Uh, I want to say I paid, like, 60 cents or 70 cents. So um, that one's going straight into the football card Z folio. So uh, hockey up next here again. This is for the Whalers collection. And this is a Dougie Hamilton Hurricanes card from the, uh, the Upper Deck release in, I believe, 2019. Um, the reason I went after this one, the, the Hurricanes play a couple games a year um, in recent years as the Whalers. And you can see that Dougie here is definitely wearing his uh, Whalers sweater and uh, matching green helmet. And so even though it's not a Whalers card, strictly speaking, uh, I do count these as, uh, you know, additions to my Hartford Whalers PC. And this is the uh, foil, like silver foil parallel, which is almost like a Topps Chrome type card version of this. Um, I think thanks to EPAC, this was like 30 cents or something. Um, so it's not every day that I can add a new Whalers card, so I appreciate that one. There's a nice shiny purple and uh, good timing on this one. Guy who had a, a very dominant performance in the uh, NL Wild Card game this year against the St. Louis Cardinals and one of my favorite pitchers who just continues to perform at an elite level um, in, at a later age here. Max Scherzer. This is, uh, of course, from this past year's Topps Heritage release and is one of my beloved uh, chrome purple refractors. So this is going uh, right on into the uh, purple card Z folio. Would love to uh, complete a career run of uh, Heritage chrome parallels for Scherzer. He's, he's just a really special pitcher. Um, all right, next up, we got two cards left here. This is one of those, uh, if, you, if you were a collector in the 90s, you definitely remember these, these Studio Gold inserts that were made to look like uh, credit cards. And I thought it was a cool concept at the time, um, and I still think they're neat to this day. I thought it was creative to use, you know, the stat line as the credit card number and, you know, fill in the position. Uh, his MLB member since, you know, his debut date in Major League Baseball, pretty cool to see that. And I like how the, you know, what would be like the chip or the, the bank logo uh, instead is a hologram of the team. So these are just pretty creative and a really good example of just the kind of wild all over the place stuff that was going on in the hobby in the 90s. They're not terribly expensive. And uh, I've been trying to pick up a little bit more Barry Bonds uh, just because I've really kind of softened on uh, my whole stance there over time and um, would like to see him maybe someday in the Hall of Fame, if, you know, if not with an asterisk. Beside his name, I still think, you know, guys like he and Pete Rose, I've, I've just really softened on. So uh, don't have a lot of bonds because for a long time, I wasn't really a fan. Um, so I'm trying to make up for some lost time there. And that was like a cheap grab that kind of was a throwback to my youth. And like almost every card we've seen here today was, you know, a dollar or less. And then here's one that I actually paid about $3 for, final card for today. It was just too cool to pass up. From the uh, 2020, I believe it was, Tops On Demand 3D Star Wars release. Um, so these are based on the Return of the Jedi uh, set that Tops produced in the early 80s. But they have that 3D lenticular effect. Uh, just like the baseball release that Tops has put out the last few years. Or the Kellogg's cards uh, that some of us grew up with in like the 80s and, and even the 70s. Um, so I'm working on this. I, I picked up a couple packs um, when they were on sale. I wish I had bought more. Um, you only get like eight cards a pack and I got some dupes, you know, didn't get the best collation. I'd love to complete this set. I think it's a hundred cards deep and obviously one of the more popular characters uh, over the years in that franchise is, has been Yoda. And so I happily forked out, I think about $4 or, you know, $3 and change anyway uh, to get this one into the Z folio where I am building that set and uh, check Yoda off the list. I was fortunate enough to pull Darth Vader uh, in my pack, which was another big one. 
uh, but I do still need the Mandalorian cards, uh, both the Mandalorian and the, the Baby Yoda or the Child cards. So those are coming down in price, but they're still about $30 to $50, maybe even $60, $70 bucks each, if you can believe that. Um, so I'm going to hold out on those and uh, work on the rest of the set in the meantime, and uh, happy to get a new Yoda here. So that's it. There's uh, you know, a dozen or so cards that I grabbed off of uh, what I think is maybe the most addicting hobby site out there despite their terrible ship time. So uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you saw something here that interested you. Would love to hear from you uh, below in the comments if you did. And I'll certainly be back in the near future with some more sports card content. Until then, take care.